Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys? We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Husband! Wife! Do you remember what happened yesterday and where the hell we are today? Well, we read uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 8 yesterday. Sure as fuck did. And uh, they were um, going to scatter some bones of people that were dead. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there was lots of, like, rejecting God and God being mad about it. And they were worshiping idols as usual. And... God's going to kill them all stuff. And then um, Isaiah's like, where's the humanity? And so you got to serve God and, and worship God and repent. Is, is there a doctor in the house? There, yeah, we need a doctor. Help. <laughs> it's, it's, we, need, we need an operation here. It's so bad. Yeah. Yes. But, yeah, but God's, God's going to kill a lot of people, yep. apparently. Yep. Because they suck, according to him. Right. Yeah. You worm. <laughs> so that was Jeremiah chapter 8. Yes, it was. Which means that today we're getting into... Jeremiah chapter 9. All right, let's do this. Okie dokie. All right, we are going to hop into Jeremiah chapter 9. Okay. But before we do that, just wanted to reiterate... That we are still at the gate. Chapters 7 through 10 constitute an address delivered by Jeremiah at the gate of the temple in Jerusalem. Because he's wearing his sandwich board and ringing his bell. The end is nigh. The end is fucking nigh. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, This also uh, starts, this chapter starts with a continuation of the previous chapter, which was a lament. Sure. It ended on a lament. Right, right. So, oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, oh here's the weeping, the weeping, weeping Jeremiah. The weeping prophet. Yeah. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place for travelers, that I might leave my people and go from them. For they are all adulterers, an assembly of treacherous men. Man, he does not think very highly of his people. No, he's like, I wish I could just go stay by myself in a cabin in the woods, (laughs) far, far away. But instead he's screaming at the fucking top of his lungs at the the gate gate. of the temple. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. like, dude, you could just go home. Right, yeah, we don't, yeah, Go, go away. Yeah, I mean... You already know ahead of time that your words are falling on deaf ears, but you're doing it anyway. Right, right. That seems kind of... They're obviously, though, not falling on deaf ears because it is in the fucking Bible. This has survived thousands of years. Yeah, somebody heard them. Somebody heard them. And wrote the shit down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And kept them. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like their bow, they have bent their tongues for lies. They are not valiant for the truth on the earth, for they proceed... From evil to evil, and they do not know me, says the Lord. Mm. Yeah, that's that's generally what what people do. They just they're like, oh, I did one thing evil. I'm gonna go do another thing evil now. I'm gonna and go, I'm gonna keep doing some evil things because I'm evil. I'm evil. I'm gonna go have you a, know. I'm gonna go have a couple of abortions. Yeah, because I'm evil. And then I'm gonna eat a baby. Because I'm evil. Because I'm evil. That's how people are. They're evil. They're either evil or they're good. Yes. There's no. There's no in between. I'm going to run over some kittens. Because you're evil. Because I'm evil. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. (laughs) Everyone take heed to his neighbor and do not trust any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant and every neighbor will walk with slanderers. Yeah, just all evil. Be, be, be paranoid all the time that everybody mm-hmm. else sucks. Yes. You are the only true person. Mm-hmm. Everyone else is shit. Yes. Yes. That, that's a good way to, that, that's, again, that's, that's very much what we're dealing with now. I was going to say that kind of describes um, Republicans today, right? Well, it describes our entire media landscape. They're like, everybody fear everybody because everybody sucks. And the only people mm-hmm. that are good are you because obviously you're watching this. So that's right. you. You're good. Yes. Everybody else, though, they're trash. 
they're not just trash, they're evil. Right. You probably should get a dog for all the people <laughs> that are trying to bang down your door all the time. Right, right. Everyone will deceive his neighbor and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. I'm always lying. Yeah. How about you? You're oh, always yeah, lying? Yeah, totally. They weary themselves to commit iniquity. Your dwelling place is in the midst of deceit. Mm. Though d- through deceit they refuse to know me, says the Lord. Yeah, I, they're always that's so they they're they're choosing not mm-hmm. to know them through yeah. because they're deceitful. Yeah, they're, they're I lying. like to lie, therefore I will not worship God. Yes, that, that makes total tracks. sense, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Therefore, thus says the Lord of Hosts: Behold, I will refine them and try them. More more refining. Remember last. Is that time? a nice word for murder? Uh, yeah, when he gives them um, <laughs> hardships, yeah. So nice word for murder then. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. For how shall I deal with the daughter of my people? Their tongue is an arrow shot out. It speaks deceit. One speaks peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth, but in his heart he lies in wait. Mm. <laughs> okay. Shall I not punish them for these things, says the Lord? Shall I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? I will take up a weeping and wailing for the mountains and for the dwelling places of the wilderness, a lamentation, because they are burned up so that no one can pass through. Mm. Nor can men hear the voice of the cattle. <laughs> I I am in my house and I cannot hear the voice I, yes, of the cattle. Uh, right. And, and I am grateful for it. I, I mean, yeah. Sometimes I hear church bells, though. Yes. Because we do live and near enough to a church that we loud hear Loud cars. Go off, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's also a bar a couple streets over, so every Sometimes, once in a while we yeah. hear music or, or yelling. cheering, yelling. Right. Uh, police car. <laughs> <laughs> every now and again. Right. Yeah. Um, have you ever been to that bar? I have not. I have not either. Yeah. Have you Have you heard anything about it? Is it a good bar? I I don't know even which one the sound is coming from. You've heard it, it might be sliders, but I'm not sure. Mm. So, mm. which I've heard that place is good. Mm. So, we should we should go there sometime and get burgers. Yeah. And then report back and right. be like, yeah, that bar is great, or that bar sucks, or right. whatever. Mm-hmm. Be like, this is where all that fucking noise is coming from. Right. JK. <laughs> Nor can men hear the voice of the cattle. Both the birds of the heavens and the beasts have fled. They're gone. Mm. I will make Jerusalem a heap of ruins, a den of jackals. I will make the cities of Judah desolate without an inhabitant. Sounds similar to what they were. Remember back in, I think it was Isaiah actually, where they were talking about the, the desert and mm-hmm. like making everything barren and. You know, yep. just the just the uh, all these prophets, car- carnivore people, carnivore animals will be yeah. there. That's that's all it's going. To, it sounds yeah. similar. Yeah, it it's all of the prophets are like God's going to kill you all, and the wilds will take over because because fear is all that really sells. Yeah. Like you 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 gain followers by making them fearful of mm-hmm. what the consequences are. This was like early days of Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're entering a new little section here, okay? All right, yeah. Who is the wise man who may understand this? And who is he to whom the mouth of the Lord has spoken that he may declare it? Is it is it Jeremiah? I I I thought so it just it it really depends on where you are reading in the Bible because Yeah. my understanding is that only certain people have the ability to hear God. And those are prophets, essentially. Yeah, and, so, and everybody else is fucked. Right, yeah. yeah. So they're you, they're kind of just doing the best they can to get through the day. But but God likes to say that he, like, lately, mm-hmm. God likes to say that he tells everybody things. And I'm like, but did you, though? No, he didn't. Because, I, I mean, I feel like if you, if you forcefully said something to a group of people, as God, mm-hmm. you know, like, I'm God, hey, God here, yo. Right. And, and told them a thing, mm-hmm. they might be like, oh, fuck. That right. that's God, yeah. and He told me a thing, yeah. but it doesn't seem like that's what's happening. So I I don't think that He did that. No, I don't either. I'm just uh, that's just my opinion. I'm with you on this. Yeah. Why does the land perish and burn up like a wilderness so that no one can pass through? Because you burned it didn't down. He, yeah, didn't He just say that's what He was going to do? And the Lord said, because they have forsaken My law, which I set before them. 
and have not obeyed my voice nor walked according to it, but they have walked according to the dictates of their own hearts and after the Baals which their father taught them. Mm. So hold on. Their fathers taught them, this is what we're going to worship. And so then the kids grew up and they're like, yeah, this is what we've always worshipped. It's what my dad taught me and it's what I'm teaching. Indoctrination. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So we're going to worship the Baals because that's what you do, right? Yeah. This sound, they sound like a startup, right? Yeah. They sound like a startup religion trying to like, you know, just goad people into joining their religion. Hey, it's going to be, you're going to die all the time if you don't join us, you know? <laughs> you're <And> always <laughs> going to be dying. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's kind of what, it, like, they're always pitching doom and gloom mm-hmm. if you don't follow them, right? They're like, come over here. The grass is so green. Yeah. Nobody dies. We got... Fish and honey or whatever the fuck. Right. You, all you got to do is give up all those other gods you worship to, yeah. to take care of all the other. The, you know, all, only your entire life and your fa- your 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 family's life. Mm-hmm. And, and start being afraid all the time. Right. Always be afraid. It, Never it, not be afraid. It's also very interesting to me that for a while now, hundreds of years at least, mm-hmm. God has said that he has destroyed all the idols mm-hmm. multiple times. Yeah. And and that these gods names will never be spoken again, but multiple times they they keep being and they're there. still apparently yeah. very prevalent. Yes, like not just like a little bit prevalent, right? But not like, just in the background, but we are all up in Molech. Yeah, you know? and, and Baal, and you know, yeah. like all that. Yeah, it's 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 a lot. It is a lot. They are so into idols, which you know, whatever. Right. I don't. I don't fucking care what you worship. I do care that some of them apparently you know murder children as part of their their right. their religious practices that's right. not good but ultimately they're all shitty gods that they're all they're all non-existent gods right and and, and if they did exist they w- would be really shitty right especially the, i mean if especially they're requiring Yahweh. child sacrifice or you know and Yahweh is not good either no so no like, not murdering children is, like, a really low bar. It like, really is. You win by mere... And I, I think that's that's you shown. Don't, you don't kill children. Go you. Right. And I, I think that's shown through yeah. the how shitty the Bible has been so far, as far as rules mm-hmm. and, and how God treats his, you know, followers and, mm-hmm. and, and all that. Yeah. Sorry, I, did, I, I know I went off there on some shit. Just, I felt like I needed to. Therefore, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Behold, I will feed them this people with wormwood (laughs) and give them water of gall to drink. Uh, I will scatter them. Scattered. Is this the bones again? He's going to scatter them. Also among the Gentiles. Oh, no. He's not just. The rich people. Shit. No, it's not just Gentiles. It's the non-believers. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Gentiles are the the non Jewish people, the oh. non um Israelites. Okay. All right. So yeah. So he not only are they gonna scatter their bones, um, they're gonna dig them up, they're gonna scatter them, but they're also gonna mix them in with a bunch of non believers. Got it. So it's like the worst possible thing that they could do. Okay. Like, yeah, I checked my notes on that. So Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, there was like a whole bunch of like, it's the worst thing that you could ever do. Got it. And okay. the indignity of it. Right. Which I'm, it, um, the way they described it in my notes was like, it was a double death. Like, not only did you die, but then your bones died too. And I'm like, but you don't even believe that. Yeah. So what? Yeah. I, I find, I find much of, uh, even even you know still today i find much of our practices with regard to our bodies after we die as mm-hmm. kind of barbaric it's and so cavemanish it's yeah. it's so weird honestly like i've always been weirded out by how much of our planet we devote to dead rotting corpses and yeah. i'm really sorry i know People might have just lost somebody that they yeah, care about. Yeah, we're not trying to be insensitive. No, but, you know. No, I, I'm, I'm talking in generalities. Right. It just, it, like, it really graveyards bother me because I don't think that that is correct. I don't think that a bunch of caskets just buried in dirt 
is correct. I don't think that's how we are supposed to care for our dead. And right. I don't know what the answer is, but I know what it's not. And a ton of cemeteries just all over the earth taking up land. That is not correct. Right, right. It's it's so like 500 years ago. Yeah, and it's actually becoming a problem like yeah. logistically for the world. Well, so. not just is it taking up space that we don't have, but also the um, poisons and toxins that they put into the bodies. Yeah. Um, you know, so that they can like last during the viewings right, and stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, that is getting into our water tables. Oh, yeah. fun. Yeah. Good times. So, I mean, and there's a lot of it. So it, it's like you didn't think that would be a problem, huh? <laughs> like, I'm just, I, again, I can never get over this. I'm just a dumb dumb. And it occurred to me, you know, just like the, the, Wait, when we go up into space, we just leave our trash lying up there? Like yeah, the, that's the pieces really of our stupid. rocket? Like, I, I just, these things occur to me that seem obvious that the people with the brains and the money and doing the businesses, it, it doesn't seem to occur to them. The yeah. trash that they're leaving in the planet, inside the planet. <laughs> And all around the planet. Right, right. Like, oh, we're just such trash people. <laughs> okay, okay. I will scatter them also among the Gentiles, the bones, whom neither whom neither they nor their fathers have known. And I will send a sword after them until I have consumed them. Mm. Thus says the Lord of the hosts, consider and call for the mourning women that they may come and send for the skillful wailing women that they may come um let me read a yeah, note about that that's actually weird wording it it is until you understand what they mean by it okay um wailing women were professionals employed to arouse relatives and others at funerals to give in to outward displays of their grief. So they were like oh. professional criers okay. that you would hire to, to like, come. Let it out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, the more noise and and outward crying that you had, the, the greater respect that is being shown to your okay. deceased relative. Right. Yeah. So they used plaintive cries, burying their breasts, flailing their arms, Throwing dust on their heads, disheveling their hair, and just wailing as much. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it was like a whole thing. Interesting. Yeah. So, um, I I found it kind of um, in a I found it to be an interesting concept, and also I compared it to um, the speaker for the dead in Ender's Game. Okay. Um. I don't know if you recall. It's been a long time. Okay, so Speaker for the Dead was the sequel to Ender's Game. And Ender Wiggins becomes a Speaker for the Dead where he shows up at funerals and he tells the story of that person. Got the it. good and the bad. Okay. So like a truth teller, not leaving anything out. And it started because, um, you know, he was became known as the um, e extinguisher of an entire race. Right. And so he was the speaker for them. And so then he became the speaker of the dead. And it, it just I, I found it interesting that I don't know why I combined both of those concepts in my mind, but. Like one is obviously cavemanish, and the other one is like a futuristic on other planets. Yeah, but it's still honoring the dead. Right, right. In some fashion. Okay. So let them make haste and take up a wailing for us, that our eyes may run with tears and our eyelids gush with waters. For a voice of wailing is heard from Zion. How we are plundered! We are greatly ashamed. Because we have forsaken the land, because we have been cast out of our dwellings. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O women, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth. Teach your daughters wailing and everyone her neighbor a lamentation. Um, the reason that he was saying that was because um, not only do you need to go ahead and call the wailing women, mm -hmm. but there's going to be so much fucking death that y'all need to start going train ahead now and train because you're not going to have enough. Got it. Got so it. 
that's teach your daughters and teach everyone. This is just, this is just more of God saying, I'm going to yes. kill a lot of people. Yes. Okay. And so much so that you're not even going to be able to honor all your dead. And most of them are going to be scattered anyway. So, yeah. you know, fuck you. Yeah. This, For, is, this is terrible. This is terrible. It is, right? So. For death has come through our windows, has entered our palaces to kill off the children, no longer to be outside, and the young men no longer on the streets. Speak, thus says the Lord, even the carcasses of men shall fall as refuse on the open field, like cuttings after the harvester, and no one shall gather them. I thought mm. that was very poetic. It is. Like it is. dark poetry, but right. poetic. yeah. Like, they're just going to be cut down and just left. I'm just, I'm kind of taken aback by how much we are talking about just mass death. Like, genocide. Like, that is that is what is happening right now. Yeah. We're talking about lots and lots of people dying. Yeah. And God saying that it's their just punishment. Yeah. Like, this is what is actually, we're, this is what we're reading right now. Right. And it blows me away because... Going into the Bible, I had I I knew things weren't like I I had a sense mm-hmm. that things weren't as rosy as they get portrayed. Mm-hmm. But man, I had no idea how much right like God, God is was just a yeah he's just a mass killing mother you know he's well, a piece of shit. What I'm finding really hard to reconcile is as God is saying to the Israelites. I will kill you all. Yeah. In current day Israel, the Israelis are saying to the Palestinians, we will kill you all. Well, and that's that's why I feel like some of this is very dangerous, right? Yes. Because even in a, a modern sense, the way that they talk about the non-believers is very... Uh, you know, it, it's yeah. okay to kill them all. They, of course. You know, like... Yeah. And I, and it, it's not. It's no, not okay obviously. to kill them all. But I mean that. But they're just like, sure it is. It's a. This is a problematic religion. This is a problematic text. This is a problematic idea. Yeah. That some people take very seriously even now. Mm-hmm. And that is that is part of why I rail against these ideas so much is because of how they have entered and stayed in the 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 modern you know discussions. You know, like how it, how it affects everything today. And it just, it's... It's very bothersome. Yeah. I mean, like, this text, this, these lines that we're reading right now don't specifically make what's happening in Gaza happen. But it, it allows people to justify. Yeah. They they can lean on it as a crutch to say, what? It's in the Bible. We they, This is how we do. They didn't believe in God. So yeah. they, they deserved it, obviously. Yeah. This is what we do. Right. Duh. Yeah. Yeah. It's really gross. Yeah. Okay, so we're starting in on another little section here. And this is the last bit, okay? Yep. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might, nor let the rich man glory in his riches. So So don't glory. Well, you're finding glory in all the wrong places is what he's saying. Yeah. So you're supposed to only find glory in God. Got it. Some people look in holes. I I mean... (laughs) <laughs> glory holes. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking about how I think that maybe that line escapes yeah. Christians who are on the football field, um, you know, praying before a football game and, yeah. um, you know, pointing to heaven when they make their little uh, touchdown, you know. Right, <laughs> and right. I'm like, but do you, you're finding glory in your strength, your might, your, yeah. your prowess, yeah. you know, you're. You're not doing it. It says it right here. Right. You're doing it wrong. Yeah. God doesn't give a fuck about your fucking football game, guys. And I say that as somebody who actually enjoys watching a, a football game now and again. You know. So, so I was actually I was listening to a, a, a podcast today, and mm-hmm. it was uh, it was the Friendly Atheist. So mm-hmm. you know, and uh, good stuff. They were. He was talking about. Um, there was a school district. I think. Don't. I'm going to butcher this a little bit, but I think it was in um, Arizona. Okay. And um, somebody chimed in at the school board meeting and, uh, you know, like one of the people that are in charge, like mm-hmm. they're like, hey, I just want to put this out there that uh, I want to, you know, I- I'd like to start a prayer 
to, to start start off a board meeting every time we come together with a prayer. Mm. And and then and then he, you know, graciously volunteered to lead the prayer, obviously. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Um how did that go over? Well, so it actually it, it's pretty it's pretty great. Um so I'm sure there's more information on their website because he covers a lot of this kind of stuff, but um there was uh two kids. So there was two kids that were there and um, one that doesn't want to really be associated with what's going on in the aftermath, but and another one that is okay with it. But um, the first one was very soft spoken and said, hey, um, I don't think that I, I, I'm paraphrasing Wait, here. I don't, think, I don't think we should bring religion into this because, you know, religion because well because you're separation of yeah, church and state right exactly and you're christian maybe some of us aren't you don't know and then another kid chimed in to back them up Good and call. and and that one he was a, that that kid was a little bit more forceful and was like you know if we're going to do this you have to open it up to all faiths and all religions and you can't just and we'll be here for the next three hours right yeah so i mean and, and then it made some it it got noticed. Good. So Freedom from Religion Foundation chimed in with a letter to them, and uh, apparently they they sent an email right back saying we haven't voted on this yet. Was, you know, like because it shouldn't even be know. on the fucking vote. Right, assholes. right, right. Yeah, and so I mean, chances are they probably won't end up doing this because it's. I mean. And, it's it's but a what headache for them. But what they're what's going to happen is they're going to walk away saying we aren't allowed to pray. They are discriminating. Right, that right. that's what the right will say. Yeah, we're being they're persecuted. They're discriminating against us. They won't even let us pray. Right. And yeah. it's like, no, that's not what happened. That's very <laughs> disingenuous. Right. You wanted everybody to pray with you and you wanted it to be a Christian meeting. Yeah. That is what you wanted. Right. right. And and we said, please no. That would that would not be okay. <laughs> Some of us are not Christian. Thanks. Right. Have a nice fucking day. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. They um still do mm. prayers at the opening of uh high school graduation ceremonies here. Yeah, that bothers me. And they do it um they did one um when I got my associate's degree. They did one at the college yeah. level um, and it bothered me and I wanted to say something. And I remember at the time because like I got my associate's degree in 2006. Yeah. So I remember at the time everybody was telling me, you know, oh, don't make waves. Don't, you know, don't be dramatic. And now here we are. And it's like, God damn, I wish I had had the balls. Right. You know? Yeah. Because if I had spoken up then it would have been already on the docket. You know what I mean? Sure. sure. It, it wouldn't be me just joining the crowd and right. saying like, you know, remember when I said we probably should not be doing this prayer shit? Yeah. Like we shouldn't be doing this prayer shit. Yeah. 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 So, but I didn't have the balls, so Man, I didn't, you know, I didn't do it. Yeah. And, and, you know, you, you give the Christians an inch and they take a goddamn mile and, they don't just pray. They force you to pray with them. And then they <laughs> they uh, try to get prayer every which way. And then when you say, can I not do this? I, I don't want to. Then they say that you're persecuting them. Right, right. Yeah. How, how are they both the the powerful and the victim at the same time? I don't know. I, hate, yeah. I hate that. I hate it so much. Yep. Okay, anyway. But let him who glories, if you're going to glory at all, yeah. not in football, glory in this. That he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, <laughs> judgment, and righteousness. Now, judgment and righteousness, I believe you, sir. Yeah, I'm having I'm struggling with the loving kindness. Right? Yeah. In the earth. Um, for in these I delight, says the Lord. Mm. So not football. Not I just football. I just yeah. want to keep putting it out there. Not graduations and not football. Yeah. Okay? Right. Not sports. Right. So stop with the praying for sports and stop with the praying at graduations. Because you're not supposed to be glorying in those right. things. Yeah. You're showing off. Yeah. So Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will punish all who are circumcised with the uncircumcised. He's he's saying, I don't give a fuck if you're circumcised or not anymore. No. Oh, okay. Because even if your wiener no longer has foreskin. You did it 
for the wrong reason, probably, and you and are you're still you're still up for punishment. You're a worm. Got it. I don't care about your dick. You're a worm. Which, which I, I, I mean, in context, I, I see you, like the way this is going. He's saying that all of you across the board. Yeah, if you're not doing the things I said to do, then I'm going to punish you, regardless. Right. Is what he's saying. Right. But yeah, he's he's still being a dick. Well, and the fact that he's was ever concerned about your genitalia, <laughs> I still find fucking prom- problematic. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. For sure. Egypt, Judah, Edom, the people of Ammon, Moab, and all who are in the farthest corners, who dwell in the wilderness, for all these nations are uncircumcised, and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in the heart. Mm, this is why you got to get your heart circumcised. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 He's saying it's not enough just to cut off the tip of your dick. Right. You, gotta... you also got to snip your heart a little bit. Right. Got it. For, for God. Yeah. Yeah. God. The glory of God. I, I It's symbolic, but yeah, I yeah, get it. Yeah, a symbolic snipping. Right. Yeah. I, I understand it. I just... Um, uh, there's just... He just never can have enough, like, fear and, and worship. Ever, you know? ever. There was an interesting note about um, all who are in the farthest corners, mm-hmm. where apparently some other interpretations um, use a different wording for... Instead of farthest corners, they use some kind of wording that refers to the corners of their hair. Okay. Um, and it basically refers to people that were having their hair cut when they weren't supposed to be um, having it cut incorrectly. Okay. Like, um, I okay, so I'm I'm speaking totally off the cuff here, and I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but um, I think there are some Jewish faiths that still to this day um, have their hair um, where, certain ways, certain yeah. ways, and it's not supposed to be cut. I think that and, you again, I I'm also not speaking correctly, maybe, but um, I think you might be right. Yeah, and so this would be a reference to that instead okay. of saying. All who are in the farthest corners, like, of the earth um, is the interpretation that we're with, yeah. where it's geography. Sure. In other translations, it's not talking about geography. It's talking about, um, you know, how your bones are getting scattered and your fucking dicks are getting snipped. Well, your hair got cut, too. Fuck all of you. Got it. Or something like that. Okay. So. All right. I well. thought it was interesting enough to mention. Sure. Sure. Makes sense. I mean, I mean, doesn't make sense, but I no, mean, it, no. You know, I mean, insofar as the craziness that God's doing, it. I tracks, I, I guess. don't know about cutting the corners of my hair. <laughs> so. Yep. So that was uh, Jeremiah chapter nine. nine yes. Which sure as fuck was means that tomorrow we'll be back with Jeremiah chapter ten. All right. We'll see you guys then. Bye. Hey, wife, I guess that's the end. But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh, yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.